Hello everyone. Uh, today I will give you another example about DMZ. Uh, in my diagram, I have internal network and I have an external network. And I would like to communicate to allow communication between internal network with the external network. At the same time, I would like to allow this network, the external network, to communicate with some of my servers, mainly web servers. Of course, the web servers, I will migrate them to the DMZ zone. I don't want the external network or computers or hosts on the external side to access my internal network. Uh, for this reason, I will bring my web servers from internal side, internal portion of the network into the DMZ zone. So the access from outside is restricted only to the DMZ. Now, if any host from outside would like to communicate with a host on inside, he will be blocked. Now, in this case, of course, uh, I have to make sure that I put some external hosts also and this host should be able to access the web servers which are on the DMZ zone. Like this, I am protecting my internal uh, platforms from any outside uh, access. So the first thing I will do here is very uh, interesting. I try to access from internal host. I try to make sure that I can access my web servers which are hosted on the DMZ zone. This will be done through router R1. I don't need to configure any routing protocol since the two segments are directly connected to router 1. I go to host 1, I start my host 1 like this and from command I will ping the IP address of the web servers 192.168.01. So let me just start pinging 192.168.01. So it works here, it's okay. I will also check the, con the connectivity with the second web server 192.168.0.2 now everything is fine uh, I can also use the names because I have a DNS server of course the, the DNS server I make sure that it's on the inside part of the network or in the internal network so uh, I will just use the I will ping web server web server one dot domain dot com for example I'm using this domain name here it is it's it's working fine and also I will ping uh, the second web server uh, it's it's okay now it's working fine so I can go back and I, I can show you the DNS that I configured DNS so I go here to DNS and I see the two entries that I put in the D on the DNS server so DNS server is used to resolve host name into equivalent IP address so instead of using the IP address I can use the FQDN of host and then it will resolve into IP address when he sends a query. So each host is going to send a query to a DNS server, get a DNS uh, response and uh, in the DNS response it will find its uh, IP address. Now of course the, con the communication between the internal side, internal network and the DMZ side is very uh, easy. It does not need a huge uh, uh, setting because in this case, in our example here, uh, we have two networks which are directly connected to the router, which is uh, to router 1. Now, router 1 also is playing the role of an outside router. I mean, th this router is directly connected to outside network. And in this case, we have to make sure that all our communication between inside and outside will be protected. So, I, from host 1, host 2, host 3, I can contact any, any server on the external network. Uh, I can also contact uh, any host which is on the external side. Uh, however, I, may, I should make sure that none of these can, can contact my internal host or services. Now, the first thing I will do, of course, I'm going to rely, to rely on the uh, netting, on NAT. So, netting here is a very important uh, yeah, thing whenever you deal with uh, DMZ. So, the first thing, I will go to router R1, router 1, sorry. Okay, I go to the privilege exec mode and I can show you the configuration how it is. This is the configuration, so I make sure that I'm assigning the IP address to interfaces. Uh, also, all three interfaces. I have how many interfaces here? I have one, two, and three. So, all three interfaces are assigned with IP address. Now, the first step here, I start configuring an access list, standard access list, and I permit in order to specify which source IP address will be translated. So, I'm going to say, all hosts from network 172.16.0.0, the wildcard mask. Okay, so now I build my access list and then my net rule, it will be uh, IP net uh, inside source, uh, sorry, 
inside source list one and then I'm going to uh, I will translate all the internal source IP address into uh, the IP address of the serial interface 2 slash 0 of the outside router so any IP packet which is coming from internal side internal network will have its source IP address translated into this IP address which is the IP address assigned to the serial interface 0 or 2 slash 0 that's a very simple I will do that so now I'm building my access list in order to specify which source IP address will be translated into the uh, IP address of the serial interface 2 slash 0 with overloaders of course with overload so it's like a kind of one IP address which will be used by many internal uh, hosts it will be shared actually enter and here I am so now I can go back to my configuration and check again and see if it has been applied correctly yes this is the uh, code here is the access list I'm specifying my internal IP address to be translated and this is the rule that will be used for translation so all internal IP addresses will be translated into the IP address assigned to this serial interface now of course I need to specify which interfaces are on the internal side which interface will be on the outside side on the external side now the interface fast internet 60 and 00 will be on the internal side whereas the interface serial 2 slash 0 will be on the external side that's very simple I do it now now I access the fast ethernet 6 slash 0 and this will be put on the internal on the inside network now the interface 0 slash 0 will also be on the sorry it will be on the inside network whereas the interface area 2 slash 0 will be on the outside network like this I'm specifying the boundaries which network is internal inside which network is outside this is very useful for netting to function properly uh, of course now I need something on the router uh, R1 or router 1 sorry um, I need to configure a default static route so I'll do this IP route now whenever host 1 or host 2 or host 3 or any host on the internal network needs to communicate with host on the inside of course he will send a packet to his default gateway which is router 1 router 1 will use will rely on a default static route in order to convey or to forward the packet so I will see whenever you receive a packet to unknown destination simply forward it to this next hop IP address so I will use some kind of recursive static list uh, all right so the IP address I'll be using here will be uh, 172.11.0.2 right 172.11.0.2 so I build my uh, default static route okay so now everything is fine I have to make sure does it work now let me just go to host1 from host1 I would like to ping any external uh, server let's say I'd like to ping server 172.12.0.1 does it work you see there is reply uh, let me just ping another server uh, which will be the um, web server I think external web server right it, it works let me just ping now the uh, external DHCP server now does it work yes now here I'm using the external DHCP server just for the sake of assigning IP addresses to the external host, host1 and host2. Now it depends if you want to put this uh, feature or this uh, this kind of server on your external network design. Now it seems that everything is working fine. Let me go back to router R1 and type the command show IP NAT translation. Does it work? Yes, I have all this kind of translation. Show IP NAT statistics. Does it work? Yes, I have all the statistics so you can see the number of hits number of misses, expired translations, dynamic mapping, so all kinds of translations pertinent to netting. Uh, Alright, now I have done my side which consists of allowing translation or allowing communication from inside to outside through netting. Uh, now I would like to provide the outside host a way to communicate with the with the servers in the DMZ zone. Don't forget from any one of these host, host 1, host 2, or host 3, I can communicate with the servers in the DMZ zone. We have seen this in the beginning. Now, uh, from host 1, host 2, host 3, I can also communicate with the host on the external network. We just saw that. Now, I need to show uh, 
I need to make to prepare a way of uh, allowing communication between external and uh, and the host on the servers and the DMZ. Let me just try this. Now I use host one, external host one, right? Let me just see its uh, IP address. Okay, this is its IP address. Let me just ping to the IP address of uh, the web server and the DMZ. Does it work? You see host, destination host, and reachable because here it's just a matter of routing so I don't want to allow that what I do I'm going to construct static net rules static net rules and then I will say okay if you want from any one of the external hosts if you want to communicate with web server 1 or web server 2 just use this IP address outside IP addresses from the external host he will not be allowed to use a private IP address like 192.0.0.1 or the IP address as assigned to the servers in the DMZ zone. Uh, on the, in fact, we are going to use to uh, allow the servers to be referred to, reference to, using a public IP address. Here they are known, they are related as they are specified as outside IP addresses. So let me just go to router one, and in router one, I'm going to configure IP net. Uh, inside source uh, static and then I will say if you want to communicate with the web server 1 just use this global IP address 172.11.0.10 right so the first thing I should write here is what it will be the inside local IP address 192.168.0.1 and then I have to, to to use here I should type the inside global IP address which will be 172.0.10 11.0.10 right exactly as the one that I specified here right so enter now I build another rule or entry for the second server the second server whose IP address is 192.168.0.2 but if I want to refer to it from outside I just need to use a global IP address uh, here I am now let me check again my configuration is it ready is it okay all right so everything seems fine uh, it seems that all the rules have been written correctly now let me just try that from external host I'd like to ping my server in the DMZ zone I will use this IP address okay now it seems it's work right it's working fine I can always trace out and see if this is working correctly right so it goes through routers so it shows you routers and it shows you the IP address okay Right, so uh, from the other external host, I can always try to ping the web server. Sorry, the web server, the second web server in the DMZ zone. Uh, all right, uh, I will I will use uh, the global IP address because this is the way we configured it, and here it is. Note that if I want to use the um, the private IP address, which is the one assigned, the real IP address assigned to the server, note that it will not work. It will stay. Uh, it will not be working fine it will not work now the the last thing that I need to emphasize here is I go to my router R1 and I configure my router to not allow any connection from outside to inside unless that connection is heading towards a specific IP address which is used for translating uh, the IP address from inside to outside what are these IP addresses uh, first, I have to mention the IP address of the serial interface 2 slash 0. The IP address, the outside IP address uh, that is assigned to web server 1 and the outside IP address which is assigned to web server 2 from the netting perspective, of course. These are not assigned to the servers directly, as you know. They have been assigned through net. I can go back to the server and show you how the IP address are configured. You see, we are configuring this private IP address. These are the real IP address I assigned to the servers, in fact. But from that, I can change the IP address by using the static NAT. And uh, from outside, I can always refer to the server using its public IP address as used as specified in the static NAT rules. Now, what I can do here, I will do the following. I need to build uh, an access list, and I say, let's say extended access list. And for this access list, I will say permit IP from uh, any host to host which host actually I'm going to specify the IP address of serial 2 slash 0 right 
Tesla zero, which is 172.11.0.2, or what it is, what, what is this, yes, one, sorry, it is one. Uh, again, here I'm going to specify the IP address, the global IP address viewed from outside for the uh, web server one, as viewed from outside and a global IP address for server 2 as you would from outside as well now this access list I'm going to apply to the serial 2 slash 0 and it will be something like this access group 101 in inbound so all inbound traffic coming from outside will be scrutinized by this access list and if it goes to this IP address or this IP address it will be directed towards the uh, the the servers and the DNC. If it goes to this IP address, it means that it's just a reply to whatever um, to whatever uh, the traffic that that was generated from inside network to uh, outside net network. So this is, of course, it does not mean that the DNC, the way that it's configured, is. Uh, um, 100% secure because you can always have some host actually which can spoof the IP address host from outside that can spoof the IP address but at least this gives uh, a good a nice example or let's say a simple example about how to build a DMZ at a certain level now let me just go back to host one and try to ping from host one I'll be pinging for example 172.12.0.1 this is the IP address of the external DNS server does it work? you see now it's working uh, let me just go to host 2 and try from host 2 to ping the IP address of the external DHCP server uh, same thing, does it work? alright, it's replying and the last thing from the host 3 I'll be pinging the external web server alright so let's just ping the IP address 12.0.2 uh, okay now it's working now what is very important here is to check if the access list is doing its work or not so IP access list yes we have these heats this match etc so it, it seems that this access list is uh, being is working fine it has no problem now from outside external host I would like to ping uh, web server one dot domain dot com. All right, so it's it's working, it's fine. Uh, from the second external host, I will be pinging web server two dot domain dot com. All right, it's replying. Let's go back now and check if the access list is doing its job. Yes, we have these four matches here, four matches here. This is exa this is exactly the number of. Uh, eco reply, eco requests, and eco replies used initiated by ping protocol by ping uh, command. Sorry. Okay, so now it seems that everything is fine. Everything is working. So as I said again, this is a very simple example about DMZ. Uh, there are very complex scenarios. So you have different types of uh, scenarios. You have a very simple one like this one. You have a little bit more involved one, and you have very complex. So it depends on the platform that you are working what are the protocol which are included like FTP protocol which is out of band protocol that needs uh, two connections that uses two connections uh, for sending commands and uh, downloading or uploading the data so we have to be very careful and we have always to keep in mind that uh, we have different levels of uh, difficulties when implementing a particular platform and particular scenario so I hope this example is uh, useful and uh, thank you for viewing. This is Hakim Adish. Bye.